chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're coming to the close of our money series and type of authority of money. Everybody say the authority of money. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. I got the witness in the choir just then. They got excited when they saw the verse. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible, NLT. So my version may sound a little bit different from yours, but it's all good. Somebody say it's all good. It's all good. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 reads as this. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat and lust destroy them and where thieves break in and steal. But verse 20 says, store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Let me read verse 21 again. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart and your thoughts will also be. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the totality of your word, God, that encompasses every area of our lives. Thank you for the power and the authority of your word. God, and I pray, Lord God, as we go into your word today, Father God, that it will not fall on deaf ears, but we just won't be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word, that we will put your word into action. And James 1.25 tells us that when we put your word into action, we will be blessed because of it. So we praise you, we thank you, we magnify you, and we glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. As you're taking your seats, I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor the question. Say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Where, is your where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? As I said it earlier, we're coming to the close of our series entitled uh, The Authority of Money. These past three weeks, we have looked at the power and the authority that money has and that if we're not careful enough, better yet, before I even say that, that God is not saying that we cannot have money. We know that we need money to be able to pay bills. We need money to be able to live and do the necessary, the necessary things that we need to do um, in life. But the problem comes, somebody say the problem. The problem, the problem is not when we, it's not if we have money, but it's when money has us. The issue is when money is ruling our lives. The issue is when money has control of us. Because if we're not careful enough, saints of God, money will have you do some crazy things that you never thought that you would do before. Money will have you lying, stealing, and scheming, and doing all these necessary things, all these unnecessary things, just so that we can be able to advance in life or to be able to have. So the problem is not with us having money, but it's about what do we do with what God has already blessed us with. Many times we're asking God for more and God is looking at us and saying, what are you going to do with what I've already given you? Have I not provided enough? Have I not opened up enough doors? Have I not made enough ways in your life? Because get this, understand this, when you have money and you have godly integrity, you can be able to do some things that can make some things happen in the lives of God's people. And not just in your life, not just in the church, but that you can be able to be a blessing for somebody else. Get this. Here's my prayer. I want God to bless me with as much money as he will have me to have. Why? Not just so that I can be able to cancel my own debt, but I want to cancel somebody else's debt too. Okay, okay. Yeah, I want to be in a place, Sister Jeff, where I'm not only just looking to see how I can be a blessing in my own life, but I want to be able to bless some other people as well. I want to be able to make some other dreams come alive for somebody else. But I realize in doing so, I don't need to wait until I have the millions to be able to do it, but I can work with what I already have right now to start seeing some things. Come to the past. I know somebody said, Pastor, I'm so glad you done talking about money. Because here's the thing, saints of God. Don't, don't, don't turn the value down on me. Don't go mute on me once I'm talking about finances. Because listen, 
God cares about every area of our lives. He cares not just about your destiny, but he also cares about your pocketbook and how you use it, what he has blessed you with. Newsflash, everything we have already belongs to God. We only have temporary stewardship. He asks that you give me 10% and you'll be a good steward over the 90% that I'll leave in your possession. But don't get it twisted. You don't own nothing. It all belongs to me. And I need you to seek me for my wisdom through my word and through prayer that I may lead you and guide you into making the right decisions when it comes to your finances. If we can start sharing with our teenagers the importance of saving. If we can start sharing with our children the importance of tithing. Even at a young age, I tell you all this all the time. The Muslim, the Muslim religion, they train their kids from birth, have a fast, they train their kids from birth, the necessary things according to their religion. Because as they're growing into this thing, Sister Carla, it's not difficult for them to do it because they've been doing it all of their lives. So if we can be able to teach our children, if we can be able to teach our teenagers the power of saving, the power of tithing, do you know what an impact they can be able to make in, in, the, in the house of God, in, in, in the whole world from a young age? So God wants us to see what his word has to say about money and how he desires for us to be able to use the money that he has blessed us with. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. I'm trying to put you in a place that you can be able to be blessed in your life by putting into action the word of God. I'm just telling you what the word says. If you get an attitude and add to me, that's okay. I didn't write the book. I'm just a mailman coming by dropping off a delivery. God cares. Somebody say, God cares about my finances. The other day, I came home from church and was put my briefcase down. Came in the house and the first lady had went out. She had bought a grill. I just come in and I just see all this stuff that she done bought. She bought a grill. She bought some flower pots and stuff. You know, in my head, really, I'm, I'm adding stuff up to see how much all this stuff is. I thought you just got off the work. You don't went to the store. You don't bought a grill. You don't bought a pot. What's wrong with the flower pot? We got that. Why are you to buy a new pot? So I'm adding stuff up in my head. And so I get on my phone. I saw something on Facebook that was, you know, caught my attention just to get it. So I'm just, I'm all in it. I'm just, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm just. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm all into it. And and, and, and in the meantime, Sister Brittany is talking to me. She's telling me what she bought. She's telling me about the flower pots. And she said, Chris. I said, yeah. I said, what, what? Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I heard what you said. What did I just say? <laughs> you know, Jesus died on the cross for me, right? You know, he died that I might have through life. <laughs> What did I say, Chris? I said, I don't know what you... See, you wasn't paying attention to nothing that I was seeing. You were so caught up in your phone. You were so caught up in Facebook that you weren't paying attention to nothing that I was saying. Sister Brittany got upset because she was competing for my attention. She was trying to get my attention to tell me what she had did, what she, why her day had gone, what she had purchased at the store, why she had got it. She was trying to tell me about her day, but I was so captivated by Facebook that I missed everything that she said. And so at that time, at that time, my treasure was not my wife. At that time, my treasure was Facebook. Oh, man. How many of us in this room right now that God is competing for our attention? Because the Bible is right in what it says. Verse 21 says it. He says, wherever your treasure is, the desires of your heart will also be, let me say it again, wherever your treasure is, treasure, we're talking about money, so money is going to be the treasure. Wherever your money is, that's where your heart is going 
to be also. You might want to write this down. You might want to put this on Twitter. You might want to put this on Facebook. You might want to capture these words and put it on Instagram. But, but our hearts show where our treasure is. And our treasure shows where our heart is. Let me rewind that and back that thing up and say it again. Our hearts show where our treasure is. And our treasure show where our heart is. If you ever want to know what somebody values the most, it's not so, don't depict what they value the most based off what you see here in church. If you really want to see what somebody values the most, Brother Mike, you need to go home with them, log into their regions or own national account, and check their bank statement, and you will begin to see where their treasure is. Do I have these shoppers in the house this morning that you like shopping? You like getting stuff? You like, there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you know that you can go over the top when it comes to shopping, that you can, you will end up spending some bill money on some shoes that you feel that you just cannot live without. They may not be everybody's testimony, but we got somebody in here that's not raising their hand. Just look around and clap like everybody else with the cheer on its toes or something. That group of to the fullest extent to get whatever it is that their hearts desire. Our hearts show where our treasure is and our treasure depicts where our heart is. Our money has the power to be able to direct us and to show us exactly what we value in our life. Don't forget what I said a few weeks ago that what you value is what you make a priority. What you value is what you make, number one, what you value is what you would sacrifice for. What you value is what you would go out of your way for to be able to have. That was a suit. <laughs> the KG a few years ago, minding my own business. Sister Helena, I walked in KG, I had my mind, I'm just going to give you a shirt. Miller, that was a suit, navy blue with red pinstripes. Three piece, the best was double breast. It came across my stomach, Bill. And I said, Soup, you gotta come home with me today. So I went and found me a place to sit down and I started doing some calculations. I said, Okay, I got this bill to pay, I got that bill to pay. I can't make it happen because I gotta get that tie. I gotta get the shirt to go along with it. Gotta get me some cufflinks to go with it too. So this is adding up. Can I be oh, on my phone? Okay, hold on. God, you got my back. You hold me down, man. Okay. God, you told me you would give me the desires of my heart. Yes. So I didn't have enough money in my region's account for the man to do it, but I bust out that good old Visa credit card and I swiped it. Have a fit for the suit. I can count the times that I've actually worn the suit. But because I wanted it so bad and couldn't demonstrate self control to either save for it or to wait, I was willing to put myself in debt over a $120 suit. Because why? At that moment, that suit was my treasure. And because it was my treasure, I was willing to do whatever it is that I had to do to get it. Let me tell you this. Jesus is not after your stuff. Jesus is not trying to get your newest suit. He's not trying to get your newest hair. He's not trying to get your newest shoes. He's not after any of that stuff. Here's the thing what Jesus wants. Jesus wants our hearts. Because if Jesus can be able to get our hearts, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had some help in this church today. If Jesus had our hearts, then everything else would lead back to him. But he said, could it be that we are sometimes in the financial crisis that we're in and we in debt all the way up to our debt because we have allowed stuff to become our treasure rather than Jesus preached past his friends today. Could it be? 
the end of the month, we're always struggling because our hearts have been more towards stuff than it has been to God. Jesus is not trying to get our stuff, but he is trying to get our hearts. Because if he can be able to get our hearts, he can be able to find his way. Because give this thanks to God. He said, I am a jealous God. Uh, you cannot serve God in manner. You cannot serve God and money. But you have to choose who you are going to serve. If he can get our hearts, he can be able to massage the greed out of our hearts. If he can get our hearts, he can be able to massage the selfishness out of our hearts. If he can get our hearts, he can be able to massage the stinginess out of our hearts. If we can only give our hearts to God, he can be able to find his rightful place. Brother Anthony, turn the air on, brother, burn it up. He can be able to find his way back to sinners. Pastor Swims, and what is the heart? What is the heart? The heart, get this, you might want to write this down. The heart encompasses the inner man. The heart encompasses the mind, the will, the seat of our appetites and our passions. Let me say it again. The heart encompasses the inner man, our mind, our will, our seat of our emotions and our passions. The heart contains how we really feel about somebody. <laughs> we don't get that little churchy cliche answer. No, our heart, our heart demonstrates what, how we really feel about our neighbor. Our heart portrays what we really feel about God and the place that God serves within our lives. Whatever our hearts entertains is going to lead to our treasure. Whatever our hearts entertains, it is going to lead to our treasures. So if your thing is greed, if your thing is shopping, if your thing is money, and you just can't get enough of it, and you do whatever you have to do, you will lie, you will cheat, you will scheme, you will do whatever it is. You will claim some kids on your taxes, and not even your kids, to be able to get ahead and get some more money. Whatever your heart is. Oh, don't y'all look at me like that. He said, where your heart is, I'll be able to find your treasure. And God is saying to us, I've been waiting to bless some of you for a very long time, but I cannot bless you the way that I desire to bless you. It's because your heart is not geared towards me. Your heart is on stuff. Matthew says here, don't you just put all your hope in stuff. Because one day you're going to die. And your coffin is not big enough for your house. Your coffin is not big enough for your car. Your coffin is only big enough for one pair of shoes, one pair of socks, a dress, a suit, and your body to be in the box. There is no saving bars you can put in the coffin with you. There is nothing else but your body, your shell, the shoes that you have on, your stockings, your socks, your suit, and your dress, a nice tie, and a handkerchief that will be able to fit into that casket. Paul said, because we came here with nothing. We get out of here, Jack, with nothing. But Matthew says, don't put all of your hope in stuff. Oh, I came to talk to somebody today that you think that you think what you wear, where you live, what you drive, and the occupation that you in dictates who you are. That is not who you are. Because why? You can have a six job. You could be a CEO of a company and still not have joy. But on the flip side of that, I'm going to get a witness on this one. You can have zero money in the bank and have the joy of the Lord in your heart that you say, this joy that I have the world did not give it to me and the world cannot take it away. Oh my goodness. He says don't put all of your faith in stuff where moths and rust can be able to destroy them and where thieves can break in. Be able to take what you get. He said, but some treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves 
do not break it. How do I lay up treasures in heaven? Pastor, I'm so glad that you're thinking about those questions. Really what Matthew is saying is, I need you to invest more in eternal stuff than material stuff. What is it? What is the maternal stuff, Pastor Swift, that you're talking about? But I can be able to lay up treasures in heaven when I walk before God and strive to live a godly life. I can be able to lay up treasures in heaven when I serve as a witness and tell somebody about a man who would come into their life and make a profound difference in their life. Those things rust can't take away. Moss can't take away. But it's something that will have eternal value forever and ever and ever. God wants our hearts. He wants us to submit our personal finances to him and say, God, this is your stuff. And I'm seeking you through your word and through prayer for wisdom how to work your stuff. This is not my house. This is not my car. This is not my this is not my money. These are not my clothes. God, this is your stuff. What do you want me to do with it, God? Because it all belongs to you. God wants to change. He wants to refocus our mind when it comes to money so that we won't have such a heart to go after money. But the Bible is right. Come on, Matthew 6, 33. That I must seek him first. His kingdom and his righteousness. If I establish the right priorities in my life, he'll do the addition and add what I need in my life. Thank you, son. Never get to the point where you say that you don't have enough to give. You can never get to the place and say that you can't afford to, yeah. to give. I can't afford to tithe. I can't afford. It bless my heart. Someone walked up to me Sunday, last Sunday after service and said, Pastor, I've tied it for the first time today. I said, you know what? You set yourself up. Now get this sense of God. Tithing does not mean I'm not going to have trouble in life. Oh, listen, listen. If that was the key, everybody would be tied then. But when I tithe, it does not guarantee that I'm not going to have heartaches and experience pain in life. But what it does guarantee is that when I trust God with my money, what already belongs to Him, He will meet all of my needs according to His riches and glory. And sometimes He will supply some of my wants. But he will make sure that every need that I have in my life will be supplied. Surrender your personal finances to God. It's a God, this is yours. I'm just, I'm just a student. God, give me wisdom on how to save, God. Give me wisdom on how to save for the future, God. Give me wisdom on how to invest. Give me wisdom, God, on how to do with the 90%, God, the right way. Not to be wasteful. But a generous heart to be able to give. A heart where I can be able to share and teach my children the same principles. And leave a spiritual legacy for my family. Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? It amazes me what we will spend for ourselves for coming to church and tip God. When it was, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have been able to do what I had to do. Amen. Where is your treasure? Because where your treasure is, I see your heart. I want you to pray. We can pray. That God will begin to expose our hearts when it comes to money how we really feel about money and where we can be able to see that money sometimes have a higher rank in our lives than God does. But that if, if that's revealed, if that's what we see, that we begin to pray and repent and turn from that thing and begin to submit our stuff to God and allow God to have his rightful place in our lives. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to fret. But if I trust him, if I trust him, no good thing will he hold for me. If I 
trust him. But as for me in my house, I'm choosing to obey God. And when I choose to obey God, I am, I am a recipient of the provisions of God. Because I'm honoring God. With what he has blessed me with. By his Father, I hope and pray that this world is not falling on deaf ears, God, that we just don't leave here as if nothing happened, God. God, I pray that the hearts were motivated to move in a different direction. God, I pray that you grip our hearts, Lord. Grip our hearts, Father. Show us, God, where we have gone wrong. Show us, God, where we have error. Show us, God, where we have allowed where we have allowed money to be our God rather than you. Show us, expose the selfishness, the stinginess that's in our hearts, God. And free us from it, Lord. That we may be changed, that we may be transformed, that we may be renewed. And walk in a way that will be able to obey you. The truth be told, God, if you never do anything else, if you never bless us another time, God, you have been far way too kind to us already. You blessed us, God, even in our unfaithfulness. You blessed us even in our inconsistency, God. You blessed us when we have not obeyed you, haven't given, haven't tied, God. I'm not just talking about jobs and stuff. God, you woke us up today in our right mind. You woke us up. God, we're ready to see. We're ready to have the activities of our lives, God. And how dare we allow you to have to compete with stuff when you made and created us in your likeness and in your image. Show our hearts, God, that we may do better. That we may do better. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody here. Listen, don't get it twisted. God does want you to honor him with the tithes. He does want you to honor him with your giving. But he wants your heart. He wants your heart. And if you're here today and you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, I got today is your opportunity to be able to do something. Ain't no, it ain't no, it, 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 it's no five steps, it's no long process. When you ask me, you, you come to yourself and realize, God, I need you in my life. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, no matter what size you are, no matter what color you are. Give him your life today. Our ministers and elders, our elders, our prayer team is up front. If you need prayer, we'll pray with you. We will pray.